I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Okay, I come to you sad and tired and tired <laughs> and that is because I just did an entire program with the audio completely squirrely but I'm not gonna do it again instead I'm going to do one of my completely random moves and use that program edit it do the best I can with the audio and apologize in advance for the quality of the audio because I just can't bring myself to do it again so enjoy the very odd and badly sound recorded Dr. Bill show. It's that time again and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon netcast and I'm telling you what we're getting closer and closer to that magic 200 number but we're not quite there yet. Aha. So hang in there, and we've got something special planned. I don't know yet what it is, but it's special. I can tell. I can sense it. <laughs> anyway, we're proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on techpodcast.com and Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon, drbill.tv, whatever you want to call it. I'm flexible. I even had somebody recently call me Dr. Flexible because I was so flexible. But anyway, so this morning, I'm recording this on a Saturday. Saturday, as a matter of fact, July the 9th. <laughs> I had to look at my little tray thing because I don't know what day it is. Anyway, July the 9th, I tried to do the first live Dr. Bill show on Ustream. Ustream. Not YouTube, but Ustream. And it worked. After a fashion, see, I had this technical issue. I know me having a technical issue is kind of hard to imagine, but this is new technology to me. So cut me some slack. At any rate, I can log into my Ustream account. That works well. But when I downloaded their producer software and tried to log into Ustream through that interface, it said, incorrect password. So I was like, dude, it's the password I used just a moment ago on the website. So I went back to the website, I logged out, I logged back in, I typed in the same password, and it worked fine. So I tried the software again, didn't work. So then I tried a second Ustream account that I had created some time back for another purpose, and it logged in fine. What's up with that? And the password that I used was simple. It was not a grotesquely weird password. Anyway, the other thing is we had one viewer. Yes. Mike Johnson. Hello, Mike. Thank you for showing up. At least you're out there. <laughs> Nobody else showed up. But hey. Okay, it was 10 o'clock on a Saturday morning. Even Mike said he had to wake up just to watch it. Which is, you know, I mean, that's good to get extra sleep on a Saturday. I'm all for that. I myself got extra sleep, but not that much. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> anyway, so the live show was just a bit disappointing. But we'll keep working with the technology, and if I can work out the kinks, see, see, here's the thing. Somebody's going to say, Dr. Bill, you know, if you had just worked out the kinks before you tried starting the live show, then you wouldn't have these problems. Okay, okay, yes, that's true. I tinkered with it a bit before, before trying it, but not enough, apparently. I didn't know about the producer software until that morning, this morning, this morning. Yes. Okay, let's go to the blog, shall we? I just, I'm a little miffed. Miffed. That's a good word. I like that word. 
Okay, Firefox memory restart plugin. Now, I, I include this article because it speaks volumes of my problem currently with Firefox. See, Firefox, I promoted Firefox heavily as an alternative to Internet Explorer, and it is still. And I used Firefox all the time. But as time went by, it got slower and slower and slower. I did that effect myself without technology. <laughs> Talent. Anyway, <laughs> it just it's it's just gotten bulky. I'm sorry. And slow and it eats up memory. So somebody has created a Firefox memory restart plugin. It seems the best way to fix Firefox is to reboot your PC. What? So if your Firefox is getting sluggish, this plugin senses that and says you need to reboot. Would you like to reboot? And then you can reboot. Now, my statement at the top of this article is, or you could just use Chrome. <laughs> Google Chrome is fast, it's clean, it's snappy, and it doesn't eat your memory up. Yes. So I would think that would be better than this little tool that you can install as a plugin in uh, Firefox and have it tell you to reboot your PC. Come on, guys. They're going to have to fix Firefox, believe me, if they're going to stay in the game, so to speak. I had a comment from someone who said, uh, Liv said, I gave up on Firefox, as many did, I suspect, because uh, it offered no advantage over IE. I just can't beat Chrome. I'm sorry, that's the fix. Uninstall Firefox, install Chrome. My response was, yes, I totally agree, as per my comments starting the article. It is a shame that wasn't meant to be snippy. It really wasn't. When you're typing things, you sometimes have to watch what you're saying because it can come across sounding snippy, and I don't mean it to. Anyway, because I used to be a big Firefox fan, but it's looking old and tired like I did when I switched from it back in the day. Now I use Chrome for everything. And that is true. So that would be my recommendation to you is just go with Chrome. Now I know there's a guy at work, a friend of mine at work, who thinks that because Chrome is made by Google and Google is his current vote for evil empire rather than Microsoft, because he's totally drunk the Microsoft Kool-Aid, I'm telling you. <laughs> so he's a bit anti-Google, therefore he is anti-Chrome. Get over it. Okay? Anyway, just saying. Next item, need customers for your product? Pay them to use it. Speaking of Microsoft, <laughs> Microsoft is paying the University of Nebraska a quarter of a million dollars to use their new Office 365 cloud software. Now, they do this because it entices the University of Nebraska to use it. They will have a large user base, and then Microsoft can come in and do a commercial and say, look, the University of Nebraska uses our software. Yeah, you paid them, dudes. Come on, what kind of company has to pay their customers to take their product? Oh, Microsoft. Yeesh. Anyway, enough said. Amazon ups the ante on cloud music. Now this is interesting. I move some music to my Amazon cloud music thing. And uh, I also did it in Google. And just between you and me, it was easier with Google. Google seemed to arrange it better and I could sort it better and I could do more with it and so forth. Sorry. Amazon, but that's just the way it is. Anyway, but Amazon is, is they're, they're kind of, you know, they're upping the ante a bit here because here's what they're doing. <clears throat> they're saying that the cloud drive, which is their version of iTunes and storage and things of that nature, you can pay a fee to keep your data there, but they now have a new thing. 
If you sign up for their basic 200 gig storage offer, you'll be allowed to upload your entire, entire, entire 200 gig music collection without a dent in your 20 gig allowance. Okay, so in other words, as long as it's music, you can upload it and it won't count against the 20 gig of your cloud drive. That's pretty cool. And it's $20 per year, not per month, per year. That's pretty cool, too. So that's tempting. That's tempting. I didn't quite click the button yet, but it's tempting. Just saying. Okay, next item. The shuttle program ends, as does America's space leadership. Now this, I don't have my curmudgeon hat. If I had a curmudgeon hat, I'd wear it. I'm, getting, I'm really getting into the whole sound effect thing, but anyway. Um, the thing is, see, here's the thing about the live program, to digress a few topics. When I was trying to do the live program, I was so involved in trying to make the tech work, I couldn't make the sound effects and the brain and the fuzziness and the randomness and all of that all come together. So I couldn't do a show as well because I was so involved with all the tech your tech, when you're doing a show like this, the tech should just kind of work and fade into the background. So I'm just not quite up to the live show yet because my brain has to work at lightning speed to generate all of this randomness. Yes. So, by the way, the Game Master says I'm the most random person he knows. Squirrel. Anyway, <laughs> back to the space shuttle. <laughs> you thought I'd forgotten. See, that's brain working. Anyway, I put on my curmudgeon hat for sure to do this one. And I even said my opinion because it's a little grumpy. Here's what I said. We were the man when it came to space exploration, talking about us, the United States. We rocked the house in 1969 when we put men on the moon. But budget cuts at NASA and general lack of interest of the dream of space exploration by the public has pretty much doomed our space leadership as a nation. It is a shame. President Kennedy gave, Kennedy gave us a lofty goal to achieve back in the 60s. That, uh, and we met his timetable of putting a man on the moon and returning him safely before the decade of the 60s was out. I was, and am, a space geek. Proud of it. I love the space program. I have been to Cape Kennedy, Houston, and Huntsville. I've seen all the achievements in all the museums. I've watched shuttles lift off while in Florida, not on TV, but in the flesh. Watched it. I've been at the Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. and seen the artifacts of our dream on display there. But a chapter ends with the last space shuttle mission. Yes, the shuttle is old, dated, and tired. But it's all we had. Now even that will be gone. I guess we leave it to other countries to continue the dream. And to the private sector. Go private sector. If we had visionary leadership here again, but sigh, we do not. It's sad. So I'll be watching tomorrow, because I wrote this on a Thursday. Friday was the last shuttle launch. As the shuttle leaves the pad, I wonder who else will even notice. And I asked several people throughout the day, did you know today was the last shuttle mission? No. See, there's your problem quote the Mythbusters. Anyway, it's 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 sad because I, I am a big space geek. I mean, when I was a kid, when I was in elementary school, I used to sneak in a radio. Now, you got to remember, this is back in the day when the big transistor radio was was hot, cool thing. I had one that was super tiny. I've always been a tech dude, and I found this really tiny, probably one, uh, well, let's, let's say two and a, two and a half inches by maybe three quarters of an inch thick, which back in that day, that was tiny. I would put that radio in my pocket, I would run a wire up through my shirt, 
and into my ear so that while I'm sitting in class, I'm listening to coverage of the space program because it was on the air. It was on radio. It was on TV. You could actually tune in and see it because people cared, and so they covered it. Now, NASA had to start their own cable channel just so you could see video if you wanted to because the cable channels, regular cable channels, and the regular news channels, they aren't covering it. Well, now there's nothing to cover. So, I'm bummed. Oh! I'm bummed, and the Geek Software of the Week pops me in the head again. Uh, okay. The Geek Software of the Week this week is HW Info. HW standing for hardware. Hardware Info. Now, I call this not only a Geek Software of the Week, but also a Geek Website of the Week because this website for HW Info, which is hwinfo.com, duh, that website has all kinds of freeware utilities for your geeking pleasure. <laughs> so, the one that I'm highlighting here is the plain HW Info thing that you can run on your PC and it will describe to you in great detail, verbose detail, all your hardware. So if you're trying to figure out, you know, I, here's, here's the thing. And that is, there are times when I want to go like, buy memory for a PC. And in order to get the right memory, I need to be sure that it's compatible with the motherboard. Well, in order to make sure it's compatible with the motherboard, I need to know the, the uh, model number of the motherboard and the manufacturer. And so what do you do? You take the PC, you unplug all the cables, you put the PC on your workbench, you unscrew the back screws, you pull the panel off, you look at the motherboard, you read it, you put the screws back on the cable, plug back, and then put it all back together, and just to get that stupid bit of information, this gives it to you by just running a program. No taking your PC apart to find out the motherboard anymore. Dude, that's worth it right there, and it's free! So it's double worth it. So, anyway, Geek Software of the Week, these are awesome tools, and they keep them up to date. They keep the current hardware in there, so they're, they check for updates every time you run it because they're constantly updating, which is very cool. You can determine exactly what hardware you have installed, which is handy if you're doing updates and checking for conflicts, as I said. Okay, next item. Don't download the wrong VLC. Now, a little bit of background here. VLC is made by Videoland, which is an open source group, and I love the open source. I love the open source. Anyway, VLC is an awesome, awesome, awesome audio and video player. Basically, plays any media you can throw at it, and I mean any media you can throw at it, all kinds of formats. You don't have to have a special player for each kind of thing that you're trying to view or listen to or whatever. You need something that listen that plays OG files, VLC. You need something that plays Windows Media files, VLC. You need something that plays some odd codec that you've never heard of in your whole life, VLC. Now, here's the thing. Because of that, VLC has gotten very popular with us geek kind. Geek kind as opposed to mankind. Anyway, and so we use it a lot and we recommend it a lot. Well, if you recommend something a lot, then some evil person will download the free software, particularly open source with open source code, recompile it with built-in malware, and then offer it on their website. Now, here's where the problem is. If you go on Google or Bing or whatever and search for VLC, these sites come up offering these maliciously infected versions of VLC. That's terrible. These guys should be shot. And I mean, really. <laughs> you know, capital punishment for malware creators. Anyway, the point is, they're evil and they're putting it out there. Now, the people who actually make the real VLC have notified Google and Bing and said, look, these people are not us. Can't you stop them? And Google and Bing are going, what? They don't care. 
mean, it's terrible. They're representing themselves as being VLC and they're not VLC. I mean, something's wrong there. You know what I'm saying? Of course, they're also evil. So, anyway. So, I had a comment on this article that I really appreciated. I like this comment. It's by Will, not to be confused with Bill being me. <laughs> Will says, due to the repository system in Linux, which by the way predates Apple's App Store model by over a decade, good point, this isn't an issue for Linux users. Now see, Will's thinking, he's got a point here. His point is, if you were using Linux and you wanted VLC, let's just take Ubuntu for, it, for an example here. You go into the software manager, you type in that you want VLC, you click install, and it installs VLC. Actually, I think it's already installed by default because it's so good, but you see what I'm saying? It pulls it out of the repository, and you got it, and you got the real one, the right one. And besides, it's Linux. It's not going to run your malware anyway, your Windows malware. See? So Will's right on. He has an excellent point. Yes. We should all switch to Linux. Matter of fact, another friend of mine at work, our senior system engineer, just redid his laptop at work, his work laptop now, to run Fedora. The latest version of Fedora, and he loves it. Now, here's the way he was able to do that. You might say, but yeah, but Dr. Bill, he's got to support windows -y stuff. How is he going to do that if he's running Linux? Well, aha, because I gave him a view session, VMware View, running Windows 7, so he can put on his real laptop, Fedora, version of Linux from Red Hat, and he can run it happily because he's a Linux dude. And then when he needs a Windows 7 machine, he just clicks on his open VMware view client. It launches and it launches Windows 7, pops, fills the whole screen up, and he's sitting there running Windows 7 through view. Aha! Cool. So, the moral of the story is Linux should take over the world and virtualization as well. Okay, more news, more news, and uh, now <laughs> this is kind of more personal news about the website drbill.cc, D-R-B-I-L-L dot C-C -L -L for computer curmudgeon, and that is this. I spent a great deal of time up late at night, <laughs> yes, many nights in a row to update the entire website. Now you may say, well, Dr. Bill, I just went to the website and it doesn't really look that different. No, it doesn't. But here's what I did. You're going to be amazed at this, I know, but I did it. I went in by hand and I fixed all the netcast references in the blog to use the new format for the video player, which is Media Lister. You know, Media Lister is our open source project that I've talked about on a few netcasts now. Well, I decided why not just change the entire world? So I changed the nomenclature. Don't you love that term? Of the netcast to where it's not D R B I L L T V date V for video dash whatever episode number. Now you say, why did you do that? Because now I can just call it Dr. Bill TV dash episode number and Media Lister will take care of everything. But she said, but Dr. Billy, I had 195 episodes. Yes. And I programmatically, now here's the good thing. I programmatically changed the names of all the episodes, changed the Durcaster streams so they would be correct. And then, I, unfortunately, there wasn't a good programmatic way to go into WordPress, I know I could have written a SQL query, but here's the problem. 
every episode had its own date string built in. And in other words, it wasn't something I could globally easily replace. So I just did it by hand. I know a lot of people out there, a lot of programmers are going, Dr. Bill, sorry, but I did it and it's done. So it's all corrected now. The other thing I did is if you'll notice on the blog, up in the upper right hand corner, you've got my smiling face looking very cool. Hey, I like to dream. <laughs> but with a big red rectangular thing around it to draw attention to it and it says click on the image shown above that's the image I'm talking about to view any any of our drbill.tv video netcasts so I will do so click the episode guide from media lister how cool is that so now you have a simple easy nice way to view the Dr. Bill Show, any episode. So I'm constantly tweaking and improving things for you. I'm just so kind. Anyway, thought I would share that with you. Um, so that's pretty much it. And we've run fairly long on this show, so we'll stop here. Until next time, remember... That the doctor is... So there you go. <sighs> Told you the sound quality was a little off. Actually, it was a lot off. I think I'm going to go read a Star Trek book now. <laughs>